And how you doing this morning? There's a lot of people here today. That's a good thing. That's an awesome thing. That's amazing. I just can't imagine what's going to happen when we actually start advertising and start marketing, you know? It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about lying today. Anybody familiar with lying? I wonder how many of you guys sitting out there could actually preach this sermon. I got a couple of people that raise their hand. There you go. Well, you know, I, I, I heard about this story. That it, was, it was this beautiful, beautiful day. It was in the middle of May, just before the end of school. And, and these four guys, they were like, let's blow off school. Let's go to the beach, at least for half a day. And then we can go back to school for the afternoon. And so they agreed to do that. And they got in their car and they went down to the beach and they had a great time. And they showed back up at school just after one of their classes had a big exam that they were supposed to take. And they told the teacher, we tried to get here in time. We really tried to get here in time, but we had a flat tire. And the teacher said, well, you know, that's okay. That's not a problem. You can go ahead and take the test now if you want to. And they said, yeah. So she put the four boys in the four corners of the classroom, okay? Front two desks, back two desks. And she said, you're really lucking out. Because the exam everybody else took was 50 questions. But for you guys, it's going to be one question. One question. And you can't talk to each other. The question is, which tire was flat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy had to go to Chicago on a business trip. He had to go there and he persuaded his brother, take care of my cat while I'm gone. His brother liked cats about as much as I do. For those of you that don't know me, let me just say something. Cats were put on this earth by God for one purpose, to give dogs something to play with, okay? <laughs> okay, I, and I'll, I'll have to, if I say that, I've got to say this also. Dogs were put on this planet for one purpose, to make cats feel smart, okay? So, okay, I'm there, okay? But I, this guy didn't like cats, kind of like I didn't like cats. But his brother said, please take care of my cat while I'm on this business trip. And his brother reluctantly said, okay, I, I, I'll do it. So the guy went on the business trip for a couple of weeks. He flew back in, and at the airport, he was so anxious. At the airport, he called his brother and said, how's my cat doing? And his brother said, your cat died. And he was just blown away. And his brother hung up on him after that. Your cat died, and he hung up. And the guy's like, oh, no, gosh. And he was almost unconsolable. But he picked up the phone, and he called his brother back. And he says, I can't believe you told me that my cat died that way. And he goes, well, how else was I going to tell you? The cat died. He said, well, you could have been a little more subtle. When I asked you how my cat was doing, you could say, your cat was playing on the roof. And then later on in the conversation, you could tell me, he accidentally fell off the roof. And a little bit farther in the conversation, you could have said, he broke his leg when he fell off the roof. And then you could have said, as I went to pick up the cat, you could have said, I'm sorry, he died overnight. But just to bluntly tell me that my cat died, you don't understand how bad that hurt me. And the guy said, well, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. He said, by the way, how's mom doing? And his brother kind of just hesitated for a minute and said, well, she was playing on the roof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was doing research for this, for this sermon, I found a website. You can go look at this website. It's called The Day America Told the Truth. Interesting website. But there were some statistics on there that I wanted to share with you said that 91% of the people surveyed on this website said that they lie routinely about matters that they consider trivial. 36% said they lie about what they would consider important issues in their life. 86% of them said they lie to their parents regularly. 75% of them said they lie to their friends. 73% said they lie to their brothers or sisters. <coughs> And 69% said they routinely lie to their spouse. We're in a series that we're calling Relationships Destroyed. And, and the whole point is, of the series is that God intended for them, from the very beginning that we be in relationship. You go all the way back to the book of, of Genesis. God created Adam. And the first thing he said after he created Adam is not good for him to be alone. And so God created Eve. But the whole point was that God created us to be in relationships with the people around. Is that me? Not me. If that is for me, tell them I'm busy. Um, 
God created relationships or created us to be in relationships with the people around us. It's very important that we grow from them, we support them, we encourage them, we be held accountable by them, and relationships are big are a big deal. In this series, we've been looking at things that destroy those relationships. Pastor John started the series two weeks ago when Dawn and I were on vacation, and he talked about this whole issue of gossip. And last week, we talked about the fact that all of us envy something, that we look at the people that are around us, and they've always got something better than we have, and we end up envying them. And as you can tell from what we've already said this morning, we're going to be talking about this issue of lying, because the, the idea that we lie to each other destroys relationships. It does. How many of you remember the movie that uh, uh, Jim Carrey was in called Liar, Liar? Remember that movie? Just for those of you that don't, it was a really cool comedy. It was about this guy named Fletcher Reed, and Jim Carrey played Fletcher Reed, Reed and he was a career-focused lawyer in a high-volume, very big law firm, and he was divorced, and he liked to spend time with his son, Max, but almost every time he got together with his son, Max, something would come up at work, and he'd have to leave, and, and Jim Carrey lied a lot, okay? In fact, that's what made him such a good lawyer, a defense lawyer, was his ability to lie and pull it off so it looked like the truth and that kind of thing. Well, Jim Carrey, prom or Fletcher, promised his son Max, I'm coming to your fifth birthday party, and he didn't come. Something came up, and he had to not come. And so Max had his birthday party, and when he blowed out the candles for his birthday cake, he wished for one thing, that his dad would not lie for one entire day. And so the whole movie is about him not being able to lie and how it just jacks him up. I mean, you know, it, it, but it's, it's hilarious. The fact is we all can relate to it because we either lie or we know we've been lied to. And the one thing I can tell you is that Max wished for his father not to lie. That is God's desire for every one of us. God wants us to go through life understanding the seriousness of lying. And, you know, we jokingly say around here, I always say all, all the time, you know, if you don't raise your hand and we know that you should have, what is it I always say? Go to hell. Liars go to hell. Well, let me explain that. Let me explain that. Lying is a sin, okay? And in the big scheme of things, people don't realize this. God puts it in the same level as a murderer, as a rapist, as a robber, okay? Because God says, sin is sin. It's man that puts degrees on sin, okay? God doesn't. God looks at a person who lies just like he looks at a person who commits murder. It's a serious offense. And God wants us to understand the seriousness of this issue of lying. He wants us to overcome it. So what we're going to do is take a look at this whole idea of lying. In your outline, the top of your outline, Proverbs 12, 12 from the NIV version says, I love this, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. So when I look at that verse, lying, trustworthy, lying, they're opposites. Because if a person can be trustworthy, they can be counted on. You know they're not going to lie to you. And the Bible says that God detests liars. He hates when we lie about stuff. Whether it's big stuff or small stuff, it's all the same with God. I mean, that verse says that God wants and God delights in his people being straight up. And sometimes that's hard. That's hard because we lie sometimes to protect we lie sometimes to cover up. There's all kinds of reasons we're going to get into that. We lie, or we just tell what we call a little fib. Newsflash, a fib is a lie, okay? Just want you to know. And the problem is when we start lying to the people that God put in our lives, that we're supposed to be in relationship, you know what it does? It slowly builds a wall between us and them. It slowly drives a wedge between us, and eventually, if we are not careful, it destroys the relationship. I can't tell you how many times I counseled uh, husband and wife when I, was, when I was over at the other church, and they'd come in, and the problem was one of, the, one of them lied to the other. And it got to the point where they couldn't trust them anymore. And they sat in a room with me and said, there's no hope for our marriage. There's no way we can move on. Because lying causes those kinds of issues. It, it just drives a wedge that just eventually destroys relationships. So 
With that in mind, I got a ton of fill in the blanks for you. Holly does my, my outline. She's like, you're killing me. <laughs> she had to figure out how to get it all on two pages, you know. And the problem is when you sit down and start writing a sermon from scratch, which I did for this one, um, I just couldn't stop, you know. And finally, I just said, I'm done. That's it. And Holly's like, you've got to be done because nothing else fit on the page. So, so with that in mind, you've got to write a lot this morning, okay. So let's jump into it. A couple of big points I have. And these are, these are like, this is amazing. You, when you hear me say these things, you're going to go, wow, okay? First fill in the blank is, we lie for many reasons. Do you know that? Yes. We lie. Go ahead and say wow. Come on. Wow. 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 How many of you lied? <laughs> we lie for many reasons. It's not just one reason. There's all kinds of reasons that we lie. And the truth is, there are many, many. So what I'm going to do is look at, look at a, a bunch of them, okay, or several of them. The first one, we lie because, are you ready for this? It's natural. It is natural for us to lie. The movie Liar, Liar, they received great reviews. I think the reason is because we can relate to it so much, okay? Lying for a human being is natural. And if you think about it, even little kids, two, three, four, five years old, they can lie at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Tell the truth, that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different thing. It's natural. Why is it natural? Because we're born with a sin nature. The Bible says because of the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden, we're born with a sin nature. And part of that sin nature is not having to learn how to lie. It's having to learn how to tell the truth. Because you know why? The Bible says that Satan is the father of all lies. Wow. If Satan is the father of all lies and we live in the natural and we have a sin nature, it's just like he's infusing us with this ability to lie. And we do it because it's natural. There was a poll taken two years ago, actually three years ago now, in 2014, where they interviewed 25,000 high school seniors across the country. And uh, this was done by Gallup. 47 percent of the 25,000 agreed with this statement. Listen to this statement. A person must lie and cheat in order to succeed in life. It's just a natural part of life. That blew me away. Lying is a part of our old nature. Lying is a part of our, our sinful nature because of Satan. John chapter 8 verse 44 says this. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That's a powerful verse. That's a powerful verse for each one of us because he's saying you belong to him. And when we're in our natural state, when we're in our, our sin nature, when we are not walking with the Lord, there's no gray area. You either walk with the Lord or you walk with Satan. And if anybody tells you different from that, they are lying to you. Okay? That's scary. It's natural for Satan to lie. And apart from Jesus Christ, it is natural for us to lie too. Another reason we lie is to avoid trouble. To avoid trouble. I mean, we lie to get out of trouble. We lie because we want to tell some people they, what they want to hear so it won't upset them. We lie because we don't want to hurt their feelings. We lie to keep out of trouble. Look what the Bible says, though, in Proverbs 25, 18. It says, when you lie about your neighbor, it hurts them as much as a club, a sword, or a sharp arrow. King Solomon said, when you lie about the people that are in your life, you might as well hit them with a baseball bat. You might as well stab them. You might as well try to cut their head off with a sword because you're doing the same kind of damage. That just blew me away when I saw that. That is amazing. Really, you know, we don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. So we lie to uh, avoid confrontation. We lie because it just becomes easier for us. We lie because we want to get out of uncomfortable situations. We lie to protect ourselves. We do. Another reason we lie is for selfish gain. 
for selfish gain. When there's something to be gained, we tend to lie. One of the areas that I think is, is probably even acceptable, most people lie on a resume. Most people will say they've been to a certain, certain school when they never attended that school. Most people will say they've had umpteen years of experience doing this when they've done it once. And never even think twice about it because it's a selfish gain. You know, if there's something for us to be gained out of it, we're going to lie. The bottom line is that you're not gaining anything. You're actually losing when you do that. You're actually losing. Over, over at St. Leo, where, where I'm working, uh, I, saw, I saw some folks looking at resumes for a job position. And this person had put on there, they'd done this, they'd done that, they'd done the other thing. They had an uh, MBA. Uh, they were working on their doctorate in business. And they knew the person. And the person did have a bachelor's in business, but they graduated with a 1.9 GPA, which means they barely graduated. But in their resume, they said they were all great. And you know what? They didn't even interview that person. It found them out. The problem is we can lie all we want to to try to get selfish gain. But if we get found out, it really messes with you. It really does. Proverbs 20, 21, 6 says, Wealth created by a lying tongue is, vanish, is a vanishing mist and a deadly trap. So no matter how much money somebody's going to be making because of being dishonest or being deceitful, the Bible says it's only going to last for a moment. It's only going to be there for a short while. And in the wake of that, there's going to be mounds of trouble. And I think about this. People who try to cheat the system, Caroline can probably speak to this, people who try to lie on their taxes, and they get away with it one year, and get away with it the next year, and get away with it maybe the third year, and they try to get away with it the fourth year, and they get one of those nice letters from Uncle Sam that says, we want to audit your taxes. Well, you know, that sucks. <laughs> and unless you can prove it, it gets ugly. It gets ugly, okay? So people try to do that. People who work under the table. And what I mean by that is people who take money under the table and don't let Uncle Sam know so they don't take taxes. Sooner or later, you're going to get caught. People who do things fraudulently, people who embezzle from an organization and try to cover it up, you're going to get caught. And when you get caught, the consequences of that are prison. The consequences are that, of that are fines. The consequences of that is you've got to pay it all back plus interest. It don't work out for you. People who lie for selfish gain almost all the time get caught. Plain and simple, we lie for a bunch of different reasons. So let me move on to point two. That was just a few of many we could think about. Now, this is where it gets deep. If you remember, point one was we lie for many different reasons, right? Point two is we lie in, ready for this, many different ways. Isn't that deep? Come on, you got to admit that's deep, right? Okay, I told you guys I love the children's Bible because it's written on a fifth grade level. I can understand it. I'm going to preach on a fifth grade level because it makes sense to me, right? We lie for many different reasons. For as many different reasons, there are as many different ways. So here we go. Number one, something called deception. We lie by deception, okay? Psalm 5, verse 8 from the NIV says this. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Ooh. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. Their tongues, uh, their, with their tongues, they tell lies. That's a rough verse. That's a rough verse. Can't be trusted. Heart's filled with malice. The throat's an open grave. Wow. We deceive when we're misleading somebody. And it may not seem like it's such a big deal, but it's a lie. And it destroys relationships. Story I heard, Joe the butcher. He was a butcher in, in, in a town. And Joe had a crafty way of, of selling chickens. He liked to sell chickens. One day, though, he only had one chicken left in the freezer, in the refrigerator. And uh, he was trying to figure out, how can I get rid of it? Because I don't want it to stay here over the weekend. Well, luck would have it, his pastor came in. 
and said, Joe, my wife sent me here to get a big chicken because the boys are coming home for college for the weekend, and we want to we serve them chicken. Joe says, I got just what you need. And he went back in the, in the cooler and came back out with the last chicken that he had, put it on the scale. He said, this one weighs two pounds and three ounces. And the pastor said, eh, that's kind of small. You got anything bigger? And Joe says, just a minute. He took the chicken, took it back behind the counter, took it back to the cooler, came back out with the same chicken, put it on the scale. He says, oh, wow, this one weighs three pounds and five ounces. And the pastor says, ah, that's good. That sounds good. And Joe says, hey, since you're my pastor, I'm going to give you the same price as I would have for the two-pound chicken. <laughs> pastor says, great. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I boys eat a lot. Let me get both chickens. <laughs> <clears throat> Deception is lying, and lying gets you nowhere. Another way that we lie is through dishonesty, just plain dishonesty. We're dishonest when we purposely leave out information, and I know all of us have done that before. We all have. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3 says, Honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. People, it's like this. I'm going to sell you a used car. It's a pretty car. Looks good, you know. Doesn't have any rust. I got it all polished up and shiny. It's got low miles on it. But I didn't tell you that the motor was blown. That's dishonesty. Telling half-truths. Mama asked her, her teenage daughter, where are you going? She says, I'm going over to Sarah's. We're going to stay over there for a while. That was true. She went to Sarah's. But what she didn't tell her mama was that her and Sarah were going over to another boy's house whose parents were out of town for the weekend, and they were throwing a wild party. <laughs> now, she was half truthful. She went to Sarah's, okay? But the dishonesty part kicked in when she didn't say she was going to the party. How many of you, you're laughing nervously. <laughs> you're laughing nervously. Okay? Sometimes we're dishonest when we exaggerate the truth. I caught a fish this big. That's dishonesty. We're told in courtrooms all across this country, when you swear an oath, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Dishonesty is lying. Next one you probably won't even think about was lying. Flattery. Flattery is lying. Oh, Pastor Steve, come on, give me a break. Flattery is lying. When we think we're doing somebody a favor by telling them they look good when they don't, we're lying. Okay? Guys, I got to tell you, you're stuck. We, as husbands, you are stuck. Okay? Because your wife is inevitably going to ask you one day, does this look good? Does this make me look fat? <laughs> If I were you, I would just sit there. Because if you don't say nothing, you're not lying. That was very nervous laughter. But flattery is lying. Now, I'm not saying it's not. It's perfectly fine for you to say, Jerry, you look good this morning. And mean it. And mean it, okay? Or I like that dress on you. Or, or your haircut looks good. Those are, that's not flattery. But when you're saying something to somebody for one purpose and one purpose only, to get ahead, to get something, to gain something, that's flattery. And flattery is lying. It's lying. Look what Proverbs 28, thir uh, 23 says. In the end, people appreciate honest criticism far more than flattery. It's not that we should be condescending or it's not that we should be tactless. But giving flattery isn't a good thing. I mean, we usually only do it trying to get ahead. And that's not really going to help us. Any one of the three ways of lying will, will destroy relationships in our lives, which results in point number three. Lie, this is deep, I know. Lying causes damage, okay? Lying causes damage. Now, let me say something here that is so important. It is so cool. When God created heaven and earth and when God put man on this planet the thing that God did that is so awesome is that he gave us free will 
Because you see, as God, he could have done this any way he wanted to. As God, he could have created mankind to act like the stormtroopers in the, in the Star Wars movie, where they just follow instruction, obey commands, and never think about it. But God, when he created us, he gave us free will for one purpose. It is only through three free will can you know for sure somebody loves you or not. When you take away their free will, they don't have a choice to love you. And so God, when he put us on this planet, he gave us free will. And this is something I say all the time because it's so important. With that free will comes the privilege of making any choice you ever want to make. Any choice, you can choose to do good or do bad. You can choose to be evil or, or be a nice person. You can choose to follow God or never, ever follow him. You can choose to rob a bank if you want to. You can choose to rape somebody if you want to. You can choose to murder somebody if you want to. But the one thing you can't do is escape the consequences of your choices. You can do anything you want to do on this planet. But you can't escape the consequences because right and wrong are going to be dealt with, okay? And, and, and not only with God, but with man. God, man has said, if you do certain things, you've got to pay a certain price. If you go certain places and do certain things, then you're going to be punished for it. Free will, consequences. And lying causes damage, guys. It causes damage. One of the damage that's caused by lying, and I left the room for you, I, I didn't know what else to call it. I, I, I knew what it did, and I was just trying to think how I say it. It's the snowball effect, if that makes any sense. And, and here's what I'm thinking. When you tell a lie to somebody about something, more than not, you're going to end up telling three or four more lies to keep from being found out. You know, and, and, and on it goes, and on it goes, and, and you're doing this to keep from being exposed, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You get to the point where you can't keep your lies straight. You can't keep your lies straight. I love this. Uh, I, I think I put this in your outline. It's not a verse of scripture, but it works really well. Did I put the Mark Twain thing in your outline? Yeah. Mark Twain said, when you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. That'll preach, okay? And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm preaching that when you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. The condition of lie telling in and of itself is a snowball effect. Once you start down the path of lies, you end up telling lie after lie after lie, and you end up telling them more frequently, and eventually you become what society has labeled a pathological liar. Do you know what that is? That's somebody that doesn't know the difference between the truth and a lie. That's somebody who believes his own crap. Okay? I am Superman, and every night I save the world. And he gets to the point where he really believes that. And he said, well, okay, we'll go jump off a building. Let's see what happens. <laughs> sure, I can do that. I'm Superman. That's how much they believe their own lies. Okay? You do it long enough, frequently enough, it just becomes second nature. And you know what the problem is? The people in your life will stop trusting you altogether because they know every word that comes out of your mouth is a lie. And they start knowing you for that. And that destroys relationships. It just, just destroys them. It's kind of like the boy who cried, cried wolf. When you ever come to them with the truth, they no, won't believe you. They won't believe you. Another thing that it does is lying adds to the problem. Lying adds to the problem. Chances are when you lie, you're covering something up you've done. Chances are you're covering up something big that you've done. And, and when, you're, when, when what you've done gets found out, the consequences get magnified. The, the consequences get bigger because I've told lies on top of lies on top of lies. Proverbs 19.5 says, A false witness will not go unpunished. And whoever pours out lies will not Go free. I've heard it said that tell the truth, it becomes part of your past. If you tell a lie, it becomes part of your future. That's powerful. That'll preach too. 
If you tell the truth, it becomes part of your past. But if you tell a lie, it becomes part of your future. One other damage that lying causes, this is real deep too, others are affected. Okay, it doesn't affect you. Others are affected. You know, if I steal from you, I can pay you back. But if I lie about you, whether it's giving false testimony or gossiping about you or slandering you, I can't just take it back. You ever heard that old saying that when you squeeze toothpaste out of a tube, you can't put it back in the tube? Well, this is one of those things. When I lie about you, I can't just take it back. I can't, I can't take it back at all. I mean, if somebody accuses you of something that's a lie, if somebody accuses you of breaking a, or, or committing a crime that's a lie, even though you're exonerated, you'll live with that the rest of your life. You'll live with that the rest of your life because somebody lied about you. False accusations cause harm and it will ruin the reputation of a person. All because of a lie. So that's why God takes this so seriously. Deuteronomy chapter 19. I've, gave, I've given you verse 16. Part of verse 16 and then 18 and 19. It says, if a malicious witness takes the stand to accuse somebody of a crime, and if the witness proves to be a liar giving false testimony, get this, then do to the false witness as that witness intended to do to the other party. You must purge the evil from among you. In other words, in Jewish law, if you got on the stand and you lied about a person, and that person was going to be stoned to death if he was found convicted of this crime, because you lied about that person, guess what? You get to take their place. That's exciting. <laughs> All because you lied. Okay, we've established that lying can and it does destroy relationships literally every single day. Now what I want to do is I want to look at some ways that we can deal with and fix the issue. Okay? So the question becomes, number four, how do we overcome lying? This is deep. Okay, this is very theological. You're going to have to follow me to get this, okay? I believe the very first thing we must do is to be realistic and, number one, understand the consequences of our lying, okay? This is real deep. I mean, <clears throat> some of you know this story. This may be a brand new story for some of you. But in the book of Acts, the book of Acts talks about the early church. It talks about Jesus' ascension into heaven, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the establishment of the first church, okay? In that first church, which I vision kind of very much like we are, because we want to be an Acts 2 church, in that first church, there were many people who were following Jesus, and they were living right. And as Acts 2 says, they were, they were selling their possessions, and they were giving to the poor, and, and they were meeting in homes. They were eating food all the time, which is good. They were doing all those things. There was a couple God-honoring couple named Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias was the guy, Sapphira was the girl, okay? Now, what we understand about them is this. They were part of that early church. They believed that Jesus died on the cross and rose again. They believed all that stuff because they were part of the church. But somewhere along the line, Ananias and Sapphira owned a, a piece of property, and they decided to sell it, which is fine. They could do whatever they want to do with their property, right? But they schemed. Let's sell it for as much as we can. And let's keep some of it. By the way, they can keep all of it. Okay? Let's keep some of it for ourselves. But let's go to the church and tell the church, we sold it for this price. For example, they sold it for 50 grand. Okay? As an example. They kept 25,000 and went to the church and said, we sold it for 25. And look at us. We're good Christians. We're giving you every bit of money that we made on the sale of this property which was a lie, right? Now, for those of you that know the story, you know what happened. For those of you that don't know the story, let me tell you, God dealt with them harshly. Ananias showed up at the church. Sapphira didn't. Ananias said, hey, dudes, here's money. We sold the property for X amount. We're going to give it all to you. And the moment he said that and told that to the, to the apostles, you know what happened to him? He died. He was slain, killed, dead, no longer on this planet, dead, right? Because he lied. The, church, the Bible says that men of the church picked his body up, took it out, and buried it. 
About three hours later, Sophia shows up at the church. She don't know her husband's dead, right? And they said, what's going on? How you doing? And she said, we're doing great. We sold this piece of property for X, and I'm so proud. We're giving it all to the church. The moment she said that, she was slain. God killed her. And they picked up her body and went and buried it. Now, that's pretty rough, okay? But that's what God looks at with lying. And you know what? They weren't lying to Peter and John and all those guys at the church. They were lying to God. Here's the point that you need to understand that most people never realize. If I lie to Dwayne, I'm lying to God. The Bible says that when we lie to man, we ultimately are lying to God at the same time. That's scary. That's scary. Now, the story in Acts didn't tell us how Peter found out that they lied, but I guess Peter, when he saw him drop dead, figured, oh, he must have lied. <laughs> you know? When we think we're getting away with something, that we're pulling the wool over people's eyes, the wool is actually covering our own eyes. That's deep. That'll preach, okay? When we're willing to lie, we need to recognize and realize what's happening to us spiritually. Because something bad is happening to us. We're becoming someone who has allowed Satan into our life. If we're a believer, that's kind of bad. I mean, think about it. We're allowed, because if we're lying, we're allowing the father of lies to come into our life. The story of Ananias and Sapphira, it, it makes sense for Peter to say that Satan had filled Ananias' heart. That's what he said. And that Satan had filled Sophia's heart. Satan is the father of lies. Okay? So the first thing we've got to do is recognize the consequences. I mean, these may be some pretty severe ones, you know. But God needed his people in that early church to understand something. That lying should be taken seriously. And God was willing to show them how serious it should be taken. Okay? Another thing we do to overcome lying, this is pretty hard, hate it. We've got to learn to hate it, okay? We've got to learn to hate lying. Proverbs 13, 5 says, the godly what? Hate lies. It's not in your outline, but I went and looked up this verse in the amplified version of the Bible, and this is what it says. A consistently righteous man hates lying and deceit, but a wicked man is lonesome. He his very breath spreads pollution, and he comes surely to shame. That's pretty harsh. The question is, do we see lying as lonesome? Do we see it as disgusting? Do we see lying as pollution? I think we do when it's done to us and we find out about it. But I don't think we do when we do it to other people, you know? It's no big deal when we lie to somebody. When people lie to us, it's a big deal. We can't do that if we're going to stop lying. God hates all forms of lying. He hates little white lies. He hates big black lies. He hates half-truths. He hates deception. He hates the whole thing. And you know what? We should, too. If, we're going to, if we get, become comfortable with lying, then we're just really quick to justify that it's okay. That it's okay. And we're not seeing it in light of the way that God sees it. So, we're going to call them little white lies or we're going to call them fibs, then we're not taking it seriously. And if we're going to overcome this whole sin of lying, then we need to hate it the same way that God hates it. There's another thing that I think we need to do, and that's practice honesty. How many of you know the old saying, honesty is the best policy? policy. That's true, you know. We need to learn to believe and act according to honesty, and, and that being the very best policy, even if it means losing something. We need to come to the place where we can say, I'm going to tell the truth, but I might lose, and you fill in the blank, what you might lose if you tell the truth. I might lose my job. I'm going to tell the truth, but I might lose a friend. I'm going to tell the truth, but I might lose some money. I'm going to tell the truth, but blank, okay? Story, true story. Chelsea Richards, Bloomingdale High School in Brandon, Florida, was on the varsity golf team. She was amazing. She happens now to be in the LPGA, okay? But this was back when she was in high school. 
she lost the Florida State Championship because she was honest. In the final round for, state, for the state, she hit her tee shot into the rough. Now get this, guys who play golf. She hit her tee shot into the rough 263 yards downfield. That's an amazing drive, okay? She got to her ball. She hit her ball out of the rough onto the green. She putted her ball for a par three and made par. When she picked her ball up out of the cup, she realized something. It wasn't her ball. The rules state in golf that if you play the wrong ball, there is a penalty of one stroke, but it must be declared before putting the ball into the cup. Okay? She didn't realize it when she putted the ball. Here she is standing here putting the ball, and she puts the ball, it goes in the cup. When she goes to pick it up, she realizes, that's not my ball. Now, you know what she could have done? And moved on, right? She let the officials know, I putted the wrong ball. If it happens after the putt is finished, you are disqualified. So she was disqualified on the second hole of the final round. She lost the state championship because she was honest. I guarantee you God honored her. Let me tell you what she said. I love this. She is a believer. And I'm going to quote what she said. She told the newspaper, she said, With my faith and with God, being honest was the most important thing for me to do. And it's what is going to advance me throughout my life. This is a minor setback. But being honest and making right choices is what God has called me to do. She's now a professional golfer on the LPGA Tour. And she's amazing. Proverbs 16, 13 says, Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value a man who speaks the truth. If we're going to stop lying, we need to practice honesty. And for those of us, me included, who lie a lot, it's hard to practice honesty. Because sometimes it just feels like being honest sucks. But it's what God wants us to do. One of the biggest destroyers in the world is this issue of lying. So, so we've established this morning that God hates it. We've established that God loves honesty. And we, we established that when we lie to somebody, we're actually lying to God. So here's what I want to do as we finish up real quick. I want you to commit with me this morning something. I want you to commit with me, every person in this room, to try to break the habit of lying. Now, if you're sitting around in this room saying, this doesn't, attend, this doesn't apply to me, you're lying. <laughs> it applies to all of us. And we want to break the habit of lying to our spouses, to our friends, to our siblings, to our neighbors, to our coworkers. So I want you to commit with me this morning to adopt a policy of being honest, even if you have to lose because of it. See, at the end of the day, at the end of our life on this planet, when we take our very last breath on this planet and face our maker the next second, everyone in this room wants to hear the same thing from him. And that is, well done, my good and faithful servant. This issue of lying will destroy relationships. This issue of lying has caused people to, to create feuds has caused people never to speak to each other again. And I want you to commit with me from this place, this point forward, that we are going to be a people of honesty, that God honors us as honest people. This church is going to impact the city of Portsmouth in a way that no other church ever has. I believe that with all my heart. That's not a lie. But I believe we can only do that if we are straight up from Jump Street. In everything we do, and if we've got issues in our life, if we've got destroyed relationships in our life, God commands us and calls us to do everything within our power to fix that. To fix that. And I guarantee you somewhere down the line, what destroyed that relationship had to do with lying at some point. So commit with me to do that. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for who you are. 
And Father, I confess there have been many times that I could have told the truth and I didn't in my life. There have been many times when I looked at this issue of honesty and said, it's too hard. I can't do it. So right now, in front of you and these people, I confess that to you, and I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of lying and, and, and hurting you in the process and lying to you in the process. And from this point forward, Father, I pray that you will give me everything I need and that you will make up the difference between what I am capable of doing and what you need me to do to be the man you've called me to be, to walk upright and before you. And Father, I pray that prayer for each person in this room this morning. Father, I pray that we will be a people who are known to be truthful. We will be a people who are known to be straight up and honest. Even if, we cost, even if that causes us to lose something. Because in the end, it's all about what you think of us. It's all about honoring you. It's all about giving you the glory. It's all about doing this for you. So, Father, we ask this in Jesus' name, thanking you for what you're going to do. Amen. Amen. Amen.